Okay, well, welcome to this screencast, which is about um, one of the three homologous series, which hopefully you've heard a little bit about in the uh, introduction to hydrocarbons screencast. Um, and this is the first of those three homologous series called the alkanes, which are referred to as saturated hydrocarbons. And we'll revisit that term as we go through this screencast, but hopefully you've got some idea of what it means already. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll, uh, you'll know the names and formulae of the first 10 alkanes. Um, you'll be able to draw their structures in different ways, and you'll be able to understand a little bit about how isomers exist, although we're not going to go into that in a great deal of depth. For, for now, we'll come back to it in another screencast later on. So we'll start off by um, just looking at what we call straight chain alkanes, hopefully in the uh, in the next few minutes it's going to become clear what that means um, but we'll uh, we'll just point out one important thing or a couple of important things here about the alkanes all their names end in aim so they're called the alkanes and that's because their names end in aim and so their, their names are basically a, a, a combination of, of that ending and a prefix which is going to tell you how many carbon atoms there are in the molecule. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the first 10, and as I say, we're going to keep them as straight chains for now, just to keep things simple. Okay, so here's the first of the alkanes. We say it's the first one because it's got one carbon atom. So in other words, it's got one carbon atom, and according to our CnH2n plus 2, it's going to be 2 times 1 plus 2, which is 4. So CH4, and there's one carbon atom, and it's four hydrogens, all attached with just single bonds, because remember we're saying that the alkanes are saturated, so they only have single bonds present in them. Okay, so that's the simplest one, methane. And whenever you see that beginning meth, it's referring to the fact that there's one carbon. And the fact that it's got ane at the end, that means it's an alkane. Okay, moving on to the next one, and we've drawn it slightly differently this time. We've actually drawn an electron dot diagram. Hopefully you remember a little bit about those. Anyway, this is the alkane that has two carbon atoms in it. So its formula is C, just um, get the pen to work if we can, C2, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens, or two times two plus two. So C2H6. Now you could also write this as CH3 joined to CH3. Or if you're writing it out as atoms with sticks for bonds, then you could draw it like this. Because remember that a shared pair of electrons in an electron dot diagram means you've got a single bond. So there's a few different ways of drawing ethane. This one's looking a little bit messy. But anyway, two carbons, that's the prefix. Eth and ane, because it's an alkane. OK, we'll move on to three carbons now. So we're talking about a molecule that has three carbons in it. Two times three plus two is eight, so C3H8. And it's been drawn here for us with all the bonds shown. Single bonds only, because we're talking about an alkane, which is saturated and only has single bonds. We could draw it, we could draw its formula in a slightly different way by talking about each carbon atom in turn, just like we did on the last molecule, ethane. Mm. And that would be CH3, because this first carbon's got three hydrogens, the next carbon's got two hydrogens, so CH2, and then the last carbon at the end would be CH3. So there's th two, or three altogether, three ways of drawing propane structure. Okay, so that's three carbons. Let's move on to the alkane that has four carbons in it. Now this is a a slightly different sort of picture of it. It's uh, called a space film model, which is supposed to show you the kind of the shape of the electron clouds 
in the molecule, but it doesn't show the bonds very clearly. But anyway, we're talking about a molecule with four carbons, so C4. You can't maybe see all the hydrogens too clearly, but they're the white dots. So there's three of them, six, three down that end, and two and two, so altogether ten, or two times four plus two is ten, so C4H10. We could also write it as CH3, CH2, CH2, and CH3. Okay, and we could even draw the whole thing out with showing all the bonds. And that takes a little bit longer. Whoops, let's just uh, try that again. Let's just um, ooh. let's just try it with. all the bonds shown. So this pen isn't the greatest for doing this, but hopefully we can get the idea. This will take a little bit longer, you can see, but no harm in that, because if you're making a few notes, this is a good time to, to catch up, I suppose. So that shows each of these four carbons. You can't really see the carbons all that clearly in this diagram, but it shows each of them in turn. And just to remind ourselves, C4H10, or the other way of writing this one, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Now it says here that there's some isomers possible for this molecule. That means you can draw this molecule with the same formula, C4H10, but you can draw it in two different structures. So we could have a chain of four carbons in a row, or we could maybe have a chain of three carbons in a row with a branch coming off it, and those two structures are different. But as I say, we're going to look at isomers in a bit more detail in another screencast, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Right, here's pentane. Now, up until now, we've had slightly odd prefixes, ones that aren't really used in any other sort of language, I suppose, except for chemistry. But now we're coming to some prefixes which you might have heard of, certainly in maths when you're talking about shapes, or maybe in, in athletics when you're talking about the number of events that someone does. So there's a pentathlon, that's where they do five events. So pentane, or this prefix pent, or pentagon, that always refers to five of something. Ain, because there's only single bonds in here, so it's a saturated hydrocarbon and therefore an alkane. Let's just write this formula down in a few different ways. So we've got CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3, uh, sorry, another CH2, and then finally another CH3 at the end. So that's writing each of those carbons in turn. Or we could write the whole thing, which would be C5. H2N plus 2, so that's 2 times 5 plus 2, that's 12. Okay, and they've drawn it here, showing all the bonds. Again, here we've got different bond angles, it looks like. It looks like they've drawn it differently, but it means exactly the same thing, because what you can see here, whether I draw it in a straight line or not, the longest chain of continuous carbon atoms that I can find is five longer. And we'll see later when we look at isomers in more detail that that longest chain is really important. Okay, moving on. Now we know what a six-sided shape is called, and here's a six-carboned alkane. So six, prefix for six is hex, hexane, because it's an alkane, and it's got single bonds in it, because all alkanes do. It's um, got a slightly different way of drawing it again. This is actually attempting to throw, show a bit of three dimensions in it, where these wedge shapes here, um, let me just see if I can get the pen, these wedge shapes there show atoms that are supposed to be coming out towards us in the page, whereas these hashed lines are supposed to be ones that are going away from us. But anyway, we don't have to worry about that too much for now, because the point about this, I suppose, about this screencast is just really to see a few different ones and see how we can write their formulas differently. So 
here we go, is CH3 at the end, then followed by a CH2, and then another CH2, and another CH2, and another CH2, until we've got to the end, and that's CH3. So that shows us all this structure, but without showing all the bonds, or we could just say C6, H, 2 times 6 plus 2, 14. And that's fine, that's a formula for hexane, but it doesn't tell us a lot about how the atoms are bonded. And as I keep saying, when we come to isomers in the future, we'll see why these things are important. Okay, but what you can hopefully see straight away is that this formula here, C6H14, is very different to the formula that we saw for benzene, which is C6H6. And that's definitely not an alkane. You can't just have single bonds in the molecule and end up with that formula. So quite a different formula there, depending on whether you've got the alkane or the aromatic compound. OK, so hex six carbons. This is the next four, and I won't bother drawing them all out, but we'll just write a formula for some of them. OK, so we've got heptane. That's seven. Oops, pen's not it's not giving me, it's just moving around at the moment. Let's just see if we can sort that out. So we've got seven carbons. C7H2 times 7 plus 2, that's 16. So C7H16. Octane would be C8. Two eights are 16 plus 2 is 18. Nonane for 9. Nonagon in maths, believe it or not, is a nine-sided shape. Um, C9, 2 times that, 18 plus 2 makes 20. And decane, or the decathlon, or a decagon, C10, H22. OK, so they are the first 10 alkanes with their formulas, the prefixes that we need to remember, and the fact that they all end in ane. OK, almost done. Just going to have a very quick look. Uh, what we mean by isomers. As I say, this in detail is, is something for another screencast. Um, but what I've got here is a couple of alkanes. How can we tell they're alkanes, first of all? Well, because they've got carbon and hydrogen, so they're hydro hydrocarbons. And they've only got single bonds in the molecules, so they're saturated, which means they can't hold any more atoms because they've only got, so they've used up all their possible bonds. And there's only single bonds between carbons. Now, both of these molecules here have got five carbons in them. So without necessarily counting up all the hydrogens, because you can always pause this film and do that for yourself, they've both got the same formula. OK. But they've got different structures, as you can see. Here we've got the longest chain is five. Here we can't get a longest chain of five without going back on ourselves. So in other words, we've got a longest chain of four, perhaps would be one way of saying it, with a branch of one coming off it. Okay, so we can write these formulas, clearly the structures are different, but we can also write the formulas slightly differently in that way that we've been seeing today. CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. I can't write that formula the same way for this one. If I start from there and work my way along the chain, I've got a CH3 and then the CH there, followed by, well, let's go along the longest chain. I've got a CH2 and a CH3. But that hasn't mentioned this CH3 there. So I'd either have to put that on a separate bond or... I could put a bracket in. But as I say, we'll look at that in more detail when we look at isomers. So that's about it for alkanes. Next one to watch is probably alkenes.